And we are live. Oh my God. Hey, everybody. Hey, Welcome to Tube Talk Tuesday. At 2, depending At two. on where you are. At 2. Um, That's true, yeah. What it's episode is this? Anybody 18, know? I believe. 18. 18. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. 18 weeks of this. Wow, oh, and we're, uh, and, we're <laughs> and people are still tuning in, so that's great. It's good to uh, good to see you guys. That's that's really awesome that they how are. Is, yeah. uh, how, how's that's everybody's week been? So and awesome. we'll address this right off the gate before everybody comments. Um, yeah, yeah. Fitz, Fitzy's uh, uh, not uh, with us again this week, um, but we uh, we hope that he'll be back next week. He's uh, doing his thing. So yeah, just so everybody knows where he yeah. is, and uh, yeah. we don't flood the uh, the feed with where's Fitzy. Look. Little known, yeah. little known uh, fact is he fights crime in his in his time. <laughs> and and considering he's in Winnipeg, he's very busy. He's very. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. There's a lot of. It'd probably be a pretty sleepy time to be a, a crime. Fighter. Oh yeah, nobody. I mean, <laughs> it's it's the it's the heat and the amount of crime you got to put in like eighteen hour days. It's absolutely sickening. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention, so not to girl. mention, I mean, that, that, that skin tight suit that he runs around in fighting this crime is oh not, God. it doesn't have the, uh, the wicker technology. So it's very hot and very sweaty in one of those. So I keep oh telling him to go, go speedo and maybe an Under Armour kind of shirt or something, but he was still wants to wear that superhero costume. That cape serves no purpose when you can't fly. I well, understand. that's the thing. But I mean, ever since we were talking about, uh, Captain Canuck the other day, you know, that's. That's the last. That's the last exactly. we've seen of him. So, he. You know. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He got very carried away. Warm up there yep. today. Eighty-two degrees, twenty-eight uh, Celsius. Right now. Yeah. yeah. In Simi Valley? No, up in yeah. Winnipeg. Oh, in Winnipeg. Oh, uh, yeah. it's only eighty. Really? Yeah, right? I'm. Yeah. I'm at ninety-three here. Yeah. Let me see what it is in Vegas. I'm sure it's. The but it's service. a dry heat. It's a dry heat. <laughs> it's a dry heat. <laughs> you want dry heat? Come out here. It's 102. <sighs> so uh, what's everybody been up to? Uh, I was back in the studio with Corey working on new music for uh, uh, two, two, three. I don't know if we even have a title for an album yet. Oh. oh, what happened to those days when bands would just name their albums numbers? That just seems so classy in a way, or maybe yeah, uncreative. Yeah. Zeppelin, one, two, three, four. They didn't even have an album title until Houses of the Holy, the fifth one. Well, it, yeah. Well, our last one was going to be Took, Took, Took. That's right. Right. Yeah. Took or, Volume Took. Yeah, that's right. T W O Q U E. But we knew how confusing it was enough having a band called Took. For anybody yeah. that doesn't know what the hell a toque is, yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> it's true. We tried so many different iterations of the the spelling of toque. I think I think we were going we were playing around with toonie, which in Canada is the the coin a toonie. As well, everybody if they, if, if they have a like, CD, they'll they'll recognize that on the inside. Yeah, exactly. We did we did use a toonie. Yeah, but I think we just landed on because we wrote a song and we thought, well, let's just call it after the song. It makes let's sense. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, maybe that's some. It was maybe we can put that out to people. Uh, you know, if anybody has any good uh, ideas. I mean, sometimes this crowd gets pretty creative, so we'll see if anybody else has you know, some cool names coming up. You know, we almost yeah. forgot. It was just Shane's birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Shane. That's Happy right. birthday, man. Happy birthday, Shane. What did you do? You went camping? Yeah, I went up to Northern California. Well, kind of central. Just yeah, big yeah. place called Big Sur, which is a coast mm. drive <laughs> up the coast. Yeah, I've heard of Big Sur. Yeah. South of uh, San Francisco. Yeah, I went up to ended up in Half Moon Bay, and then uh, Daly City. I think is kind of where I sort of went back and started to come back down south. Met is Half with... is Half Moon Bay where the big uh, surfing waves are? Yeah, Mavericks. Mavericks. That's right. That's that's Come insane, right? Northern Point. I uh... well in the winter time, but the northern Half Moon Bay is a place called Mavericks, and it's a point that sticks out. And basically, in the in the winter time. Uh, during certain swells that come down, it just gets huge mammoths, like 60-foot face waves that come through. To be and, honest, it sounds like it might have been a birthday getaway and maybe partly escaping from the law. I'm not sure what. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. Just a you know, getaway, do some hiking, sightseeing. and I love the drive up there, so I yeah, would highly awesome. recommend is that all me. like PCH or how does that all like what how does that all work up there? Yeah, I mean basically take the one one 
to oh. San Luis Obispo, and then you cut over to the coast and take PCH up. That's kind of the, the way. I see. And gi- giant redwood trees, right? Yeah, I think a little. There's a few spots that have those, but yeah, you know, yeah. a little more inland is where the big ones are, and nor northern California, even and further it's, it's, up north. Kind of a little bit farther north is where they did uh, Endor shots in in uh, Star Wars, right? <laughs> That's right. That's the important thing here. Why, why yes. are we wasting all this Tell time? Tell me. Yeah. Can we start talking about Star Wars some more, please? Corey's just trying to just weave this whole thing to talking about Endor and Ewoks. Here we go. Now. <laughs> and uh, and before we forget, this is like uh, Fred Penner's mailbag here, Shane. Uh, you got some stuff sent to you here that I'm going to send back with Fitzy. This is all the way from New Zealand from Tina. Oh, wow. She sent you this cool tank. Wow. Actually, she sent shirts for all you guys, but is we don't have. Paper? What's that? Is that a big foot? Um, it looks like a yeah, monkey it's... or something. Oh, oh yeah. She, she has a little note here. Sure. It says, Shane, thanks for Took Tuesday, the great music and kindness in liking my photography. Love, Tina. Yeah, she's oh. awesome. I'll check her but out. That, Tina. Doesn't she know that like giving gifts is like chewing gum in school? If you don't have enough for everyone, oh, no, you shouldn't I, I do did. it at I all. I told you, there are, there are a whole <laughs> pack here. There, there are shirts for everybody. Oh, there is now. a whole. Okay. Actually, Corey. Okay. There, well... <laughs> It is Shane's birthday. I'm not too uh, bummed out. Was. This or one's was, for Todd. Yeah. It was fun. Oh, Ooh, it's like a like Dad. like a tiki kind of mask kind of. Can I trade? Like Can we trade, Todd? Yeah, you, mine will be like a nightshirt uh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. I just saw I just saw this picture today, Shane. I'm gonna find it for and you. Corey, this one's yours. You'll like this one. I like the one okay. that you posted. The infamous picture where I'm yeah here. Star Wars, that's awesome. That's great. And Which picture? That's, that's Tina. Yeah. yeah. Oh and, yeah. And you also got this. And, and uh, uh, Her- Her- what date was that? From... That was a year ago today. Hiroko yes, from I Japan. This came for you too, Shane. So this will be coming to you. <laughs> it's, oh, is it wow. ticking? Yeah, I, I was is afraid to open it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is it yeah, so this is like the hub here, you know. Uh, just be careful, don't throw that thing around I too know. much. Poor yeah. fit gonna have to like bring an extra suitcase yeah, for me. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a fit's problem. It is. Um so we're uh yeah, so we're uh, we're going here. Um and we might as well uh bring in our guest and Go uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should. And why are we yeah, fooling around? Exactly. Let's get to the good stuff. I mean I, I know you guys. I I saw Corey this week. I really don't have anything to say to any of you. I just want to talk to Holly. Let's get this over. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Today's going to be a good day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to Holly. <laughs> totally. That's the only reason why I'm here. I don't want to talk to you guys. So, so to uh, Corey, you should do do an intro. But I just want to say, okay. we saw I saw Holly back on the Lock Up Your Sons tour. I didn't have a son, so I couldn't lock any up. So, and my parents did not. <laughs> My parents did not lock up their son because I was mm-hmm. there. It was the Headpins opening, a brand new group called the Headpins opening for. I, I stood in line. I stood in line in Saskatoon to get Holly and the band's autograph on the Get It On Credit album, which I probably have somewhere. I got to go look around, but but uh, I would love to find that. But go would ahead, you... introduce. Okay, so today we have a great show. Uh, check out the shirt. Oh yeah. Courtesy of Barry, Barry Connors. That's how I got yes. this this baby. Uh, Barry plays drums with Toronto. And today we have the lead singer, one of my most favorite rock and roll female lead singers. Uh, I brag about her everywhere. Oh, you know, you got to listen to this band Toronto. They're so awesome. <laughs> Since I've been 14 year old, I've been bragging the same thing about how awesome she is. Um, the first time that I saw her was in, in a commercial for a lock up your son's tour right I was in my basement and, and it was like break down the barricade and i'm like what is this this is awesome look at those lights <laughs> and then and there she was she kind of does this your love's a tidal wave <laughs> holly doesn't holly doesn't know that Corey does a, a, a he does a tribute to uh to holly woods as holly woods he does the whole sh- i'm just kidding that would be awesome <laughs> and we covered one of their songs, Enough is Enough, on the Never That's Enough right. album. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, she sings so high that we actually had to lower the key of this one for Todd. It's one of, one of yeah. two songs that we actually had to lower the key for Todd. Well, yeah, it's those girls singing really high. I, uh, give me a break. 
<laughs> yeah. Break down! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without further ado, please welcome to Tuke Talk Tuesday at 2, Miss Hollywoods. Hi, Miss Hollywoods. Hi. How are you? I am hanging in there. How are you guys? Doing great. First Little of all, look at, yeah. the, look at the headrest behind her. It's I her airplane that. pillow. Show us that. Yeah, that's great. for my neck on the plane. I need nice. it. Yes. Getting, on up, getting on up there, you know, oh, got to okay. have something for the old neck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little known, I mean, it's probably very well known, but I, I, it's always been interesting to me that you, just so everybody knows, you're actually American and you're currently in, in the States, but you became a very famous singer in a Canadian rock band. So in and of itself, we have to unpack how that all happened. That's really fascinating to yeah, me. Yeah, because it's kind of like a, an American football player going and making it big in in the CFL in Canada, right? Which, which happens, mm -hmm. yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It is very much like uh, <clears throat> one of those twisted fairy tales that you, <laughs> you, seem to, you seem to be living out as it goes along. Now, you guys know from being on the road probably a lot of your lives as well, you join different bands. You move to different cities so that you can get work. At least we did back then. And uh, I joined a series of bands that uh, did different types of music. One band was uh, based basically in Rochester, New York. So uh, we were doing a house gig in a place called Greenville, North Carolina at the time. And the drummer from Rochester said, uh, listen, we're not getting much work down here. Let's move up to Rochester, New York, where they're really, they're really going to like our style of uh, cartoons. So I threw my gear together and went on up with the fellas. And from Rochester, we got gigs over in Toronto, across the border. And we would go over there and play a little bit, do Larry's gas works, and come back to Rochester. Well, eventually, it led to us getting so much work in Canada that we just moved over there and lived at Larry Sideway for a while. Amazing. And through that, I managed to meet the band Rose, and we stayed friends for a long time. I did a guest spot on one of their albums. Anyway, long story short, uh, as that band broke up, I moved out to San Francisco and joined a band out there and got things together out there. And I got a phone call from uh, Jimmy Fox, the drummer in Vancouver, and he said, listen, uh, Rose is in Vancouver, we're doing a cross-country tour, we want you to come and uh, do lead vocals. I said, well, Brian does lead vocals, you don't need me. He said, no, we're going to have to do it together for a while. So I don't know what you got going on in San Francisco, but we need you up here as soon as possible. So we began. You make a snap decision. It's a set choice. Grab my gear, say goodbye to my brother. So on the next flight to Vancouver and joined Rose. Rose wow. turning it to. That's so was, crazy. Was, it... was Rose the band that Brian Allen, Allen was in? Yes, that was Brian Allen. Uh, that was Brian's band, basically. He was the writer, composer, leader of the band. And uh, a drummer that I had worked with before happened to be in Rose. So that's how Brian heard of me. The drummer, Jimmy Fox, said, hey, you got to hear this girl sing and uh that's how we met and fell in love and well musically, musically <laughs> fell in love. yeah and that's uh that's how it went from there we were i was on the road with rose touring across canada i had never seen all of canada before i was awestruck so uh i would learn a new song every two or three days and sort yeah. of slip in to the set, you know. So by the time we got back in Toronto, I was full timing with Rose. That's great. And we went on from there. Yeah. That's really interesting Rose because Canada is like one of those, like Ronnie Hawkins came up with like Levon Helm right. and those guys from down yes. south. And yes. all relocated to Toronto because of the work they could get. Just and because of the draft. And the draft, oh. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good point. You Good guys point. are too young. You're too young. <laughs> <laughs> draft well, beer, right. I knew that yeah. story. The tra yes, draft beer. Yeah. No, I knew there was some kind of story <laughs> like that with the with the band Heart. There's some stories about them going 
into Canada based around basically the same thing almost yeah. draft stuff going on yeah oh. yeah which is, a, which is a fascinating thing to consider because yeah that was a, a genuine genuine concern for young people in that particular time wow absolutely we, yeah. we think we got it rough right yeah um it yeah it's uh get, it was easy to get into canada in those days like in those days, yeah, you didn't even, uh, I think you just needed a driver's license. Yeah. And you didn't get the background check or anything like that. So. I mean, it's pretty much it's like pretty that now, right? Just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a total No, happen. don't. Yeah. You guys are doing the we right thing. Don't you dare let us in. Don't you <laughs> dare. <let us> in. <laughs> You're doing the right thing. To be fair, Darren is the only one in Canada right now. I, I usually point this out because Corey's in L.A., Shane's in L.A., I'm in Vegas, and you're... I'm, I'm sorry, where are you, Holly? Sure. Durham, North Carolina. Durham, North Carolina. There you go. There hey, is you'll... a Durham, England, and I've lost a lot of luggage to Durham, England. Uh, because <laughs> that's, how, that's how most... Uh, of my Canadian friends remember it, Durham, England, Durham, North Carolina. That's hilarious. Yeah, Darren's in in Winnipeg, so that's the most Canadian place. And I think Durham, Durham, North Carolina, sounds like the most American place. Yeah, just it's not only American fellows, but it's Southern. Yeah, and I'm talking Southern. <laughs> you know, old time values. I dig you that. Know. I dig that. That's cool. <laughs> When Mama you're up does in Canada. the cooking and Daddy smokes a corn cob pipe on the porch. Oh my God, oh, my wow. friends are going to kill me. No, no. <laughs> Just, kidding. Just kidding. I'm kidding. So what kidding. was that like? What was it like? So I guess you got to go to the New York, say, a place like Rochester, and experience like a winter there before you got to go to like, I don't know, be in like. I'm sure you were in Winnipeg and Saskatoon and all those places. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Also, you had experience that we all grew up with that must have been a very eye-opening thing for a person from north carolina oh to tell you the truth of when we first went to the city of toronto crossing over the border to to do a gig i had just moved up to rochester from durham which is especially back then is not that big of a city i don't think i would even call it a city back then I had never seen a place as big as Rochester, and it's considered tiny next to Toronto. So yeah. when I got to Toronto, obviously, I, I felt like uh, Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> it just, oh, I was awestruck. I couldn't I believe it. Yeah. Oh, my God. I hope I, I hope I do not wake up. <laughs> you know what's so funny is I have the exact same experience. Embarrassingly, this is a true story. When I got a gig in this band, I, I took a Greyhound bus from Saskatchewan all the way to Edmonton, Alberta, and I was riding through the city in the middle. Of, it was it felt like it was the middle of the night, riding through the city to the Greyhound station. And I looked at, at, at Edmonton, Alberta, may as well have been Hollywood. You know what I mean? Like it, it Oh, looked, yeah. The, build, the buildings were so big, and I was like, whoa, I've arrived. I've made it. I Absolutely. Yeah, I, I lived in Edmonton for a while, and yeah, oh, wow. it's uh, it the glass city. Everything, everything was glass. Everything's it's glass. so flat, too. Like, when you approach Edmonton, it's so wide and spread out. You it see is, it yeah, for yeah. miles and miles and miles. Yes. The <laughs> prairies. How about riding through the prairies, oh, yeah. guys? How, oh, and, and you cannot find a, a washroom. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> guys, have, we don't have that problem. It's just one big washroom. hole in the ground. I, lo I love that you're using. The I love that you're using the term washroom. That's yeah. another Canadianism that. Uh, yeah. If you say that in the, to certain places in the states, excuse me, where's your washroom? The person will look at you like you're, like you're speaking Mandarin Chinese. Well, or they, your water they closet. look at me sort of like. Uh, oh my God, she's reverting back to the Hollywood persona because <laughs> you know down here I'm Annie. Okay. Sure. Like oh no, it's Holly. It's Holly again. That's right. So uh, yeah, I have to I have to remember where I am. I'd wake up some mornings and go, okay, Holly, Annie, Holly. <laughs> Make a decision. I think that's great. Depends on the day. When did you go from Annie to Holly? That's a that's a pretty cute little story. When uh, when we first started uh, writing original music in Rochester, New York, with with our little band there, we had an agent called Hollywood. You know, we thought that was big deal. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name. Of course, I don't think he's still alive. But anyway, we did our song that we had worked hard on. And, you know, we played our tune and sang my heart out. And 
finished the tune and sort of waited for the response. It's a big fellow, big cigar, you know, talking to talk about those. And he listened to the song. He looked at me and he said, what's your name, little girl? I said, uh, well, my friends call me Annie. He said, never again. You're Hollywood. <laughs> and so the band, the band sort of laughed. And then we all sort of took it with a grain of salt, but it just stuck. Uh-huh. And it just, uh, it just stuck. It's Amazing. The perfect, it's a perfect stage name. I mean, it's impossible to forget Hollywoods. As soon as you hear it, you're like, yep, that's, that's Hollywoods, yep. Well, when I first moved to Toronto, there was also, and I'm going to say exotic dancer, but we all know what that is, named Hollywoods. Oh. And uh, we, we, would, we would get confused at times. So me being me, I jump down to the strip club and I go, hi, I'm Holly, and I think we have the same name. And after that, we around, <laughs> hung out all the time. And yeah, so... That's always handy because if somebody was prefer, it could be, there's a lot of us. Exactly, it's handy because I actually, yeah. If you get in, if somebody, if a Hollywood's gets in trouble, you're like, wasn't me, it was that Hollywood's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wrong, wrong Hollywood. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Google me. There's albums there, so it's not me. It wasn't you no. Know. <laughs> so, at what point did uh, Rose turn into Toronto then? We uh, we came to a crossroads, as most bands do, when you're together for a while and you start getting a new blood. People's musical tastes warped and changed, and the times were changing in 1978. Mm. The sound of music was changing. It was going into punk and straight-ahead rock and, you know, swarf, you know just sort of morphing into a new wave type thing so we wanted to change as well right so he started going to a different direction brian started writing with me and the connection was very different than what was going on with rose and our keyboard player at the time was not really feeling it so he left and i managed to get my keyboard player and bass player from the rochester band Cool. to come up and do this. And uh, from there, we started uh, working together, writing, and uh, Brian and I had made friends with a band called Lady at the time, an all-female rock band. They were just awesome. Wow. And we would go and play, and I, I mentioned to Brian one night, I said, Brian, you know, two guitar players would be awfully good in this band. What would you think about Sharon Alton on... Uh, on lead as well. He said, yeah, you know, that, that's, that's probably a good idea. So from there, there were talks, and uh, eventually Sharon came in. And uh, there you have a short story uh-huh. of what was really a little mm-hmm. while, but and Sharon, happened, yeah. Sharon married Brian at some point, is that right? Yes, they uh, they got to be very close, and they, they really clicked, and they wound up getting married, and so, uh, are they still together? Yeah. It became so. a family like atmosphere. No, 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 no. They divorced quite a while ago. Okay. Was Was Sharon from the Toronto area as well, or where was Sharon from? She lived in the Toronto area, but okay. she was born in England. Sharon's oh, I didn't from know England. That. Oh wow! The only Canadian that. was Brian Allen. Oh wow! <laughs> really? That's fascinating. Wow. Hey, God's honest truth. The only Canadian was Brian Allen. Huh. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, that, that puts a lot right? of things in perspective. Wow. Yeah. We all met in Toronto, so... That seems like the perfect thing. That's kind of went along with the name, but none of us really liked the name. Well, it's, oh, okay. it's a funny <laughs> thing. Like, when you got Kansas, Asia, Chicago, yeah. you know, uh, and America, Boston, Boston, Boston. Yeah. Toronto. You know, it's <laughs> sort of... At that time, it certainly makes a lot of sense. It's, there's not a lot of Canadian... Winnipeg. We should call it. That's, that's the hey, what about Chilliwack? Like Chilliwack. 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 Exactly. There, you, yeah, there you go. I think uh, actually Headley is also named after a city in Canada as well. Oh, I didn't oh, know. Was that right? right? Oh, that's that's BC. Yeah, I, I played a I played a festival in Headley, British Columbia. Everybody assumes that's it's the last hilarious. name of the singer, who I don't feel we should probably talk about under the uh, recent circumstances. But uh, yeah, it was named oh, yeah. after named, oh. named after uh, the oh. city. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, Google that one. It's really good. We don't want that. Uh, don't... Of course I will. <laughs> He's not Canadian. He's not Canadian. Everybody stand by. We're Googling. Oh we'll sure. We'll send you some literature. Yeah. The uh... I don't even think you can send that. No, I think it's always it's always it's always a good default to kind of like you know if you come from a cool place. I mean you know if you I you'd have to like I've always thought Toronto was actually a really good name because to to us that was the big city from the little yeah. towny tiny part of the world we come from. I always thought Toronto. Sure, yeah, that, that makes sense. I like but the Toronto. Name. So at what point did it, uh, did like record deals and stuff like that come into play? Because it we seemed were, like you guys came out, boom, like just like that. Actually, it was exactly like that. We were doing a, uh, like I think six days a week, Larry's hired away with us. Uh, Larry's goes way back. I don't know if you guys actually are familiar with Larry's hideaway or not, but it used to be a big spot for rock bands in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And we lived there and played there, so oh, wow. you there's a lot to say about that, but I won't go into that part because I, I don't think we can get that on. on <laughs> but anyway, we were playing one night, and in walked two guys, uh, Neil Dixon and Steve Propeas, and they approached us and said, uh, we'd like to do a record deal. We'd like to talk to you about doing a record deal. And so we sat down, did some talks, and signs of things and it was us with solid gold okay that's how fast it was Boom. and solid gold also had like was chilliwack on solid gold chilliwack yes. uh head, head head pins. Pins. head pins there was right. a lot of great music that came out of that label was that label based in toronto or were they based in vancouver toronto toronto okay that makes sense yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah and but then you did your your first album and i just learned today that it was produced by bill henderson is that right and Brian, Bill and Brian, Bill and Brian. yes. That, that's Bill and Brian. I have no we idea. Go, we go way back, uh, all of us. We were really good friends as well, and uh, it was a treat. Still, my favorite album experience of all. Of them. That's amazing. And for and for the to the audience that doesn't know, Bill Bill Henderson's the lead singer of Chilliwack, and Brian McLeod was a guitar player for right. Chilliwack and the Headpins. So yes. it's amazing how close knitted the whole Canadian rock industry was at that time. I mean, we've had so many guests on our show that are cross-pollinating like Laverne and Shirley did in Happy Days, you know, where... <laughs> well, yeah, I, I couldn't put it better myself. That's a great word for it, cross-pollinating, yes. Absolutely. So like, how does that work, here. With, with Bill and Brian being all the way on the West Coast, I mean, how is that just... Where did you record the album? I mean, where was it done in Toronto? Um, so, uh... Where were we? Oh, I think. Um, pretty sure I'm going to get corrected on this if I'm wrong. Okay. Terry, I know you're listening. Uh, <laughs> I think it was Sounds Interchange. I, I think it was Sounds Interchange in Toronto. I'm pretty okay. sure it was. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Sure. And they, they, stayed, they came to Toronto and stayed uh, through the duration of the, of the record. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean... The those guys are sure responsible for a lot of great music that came out of Canada. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, well, no, quite well known down here as well. Did yeah, you guys have the, the music? Was it written? All written when you went into the studio for the first record? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think we came up with a couple of fresh ideas and uh, we got a lot of input from uh, Ryan Bill for arrangements, uh, maybe a few lyric changes here and there, but for the most part, yeah, it was written. Yes, we had a lot of material that we had demoed down in uh, Lookout Mountain, Tennessee. Right. Was That's tight. where we did all our work down in uh, Lookout Mountain, Tennessee in Atlanta. We brought it up back up to Toronto from down there. Wow. I see. Another long story. God, oh God, there's so many long stories. <laughs> so how does that work though? If with with so the most of the band came from uh well america three of you yes. are american one of you is english what was um did did chilliwack have an impact on you guys in any way like were you aware of the band by that point were they kind of like a happening thing in canada when you guys got ready to record and all that well of course you know the chilliwack songs were Gosh, gosh, I think I heard uh, 
several Chilliwack songs. Yeah. It was quite it was huge cool. at that point. So, well, they got, yeah. They got kind of even bigger after that. They, I mean, the they Chilliwack did, was, you know, yeah. with Brian on board, they, they exactly. did uh, My Girl and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, uh, I was quite familiar with Chilliwack at the time. Oh, yeah. There you go. I had met Bill and Brian before. So is before it the album. is it really? I, I'm always very fascinated by the idea, and I've had conversations with a lot of over the years. I've got to know so many female musicians and so many female singers and stuff like that. I think there's it's that really, many of us. <laughs> I, right? That's the fascinating thing. Is it's kind of like when I think <laughs> when you guys were around. Um, like someone like Pat Benatar was massive. You know what I mean? Like a massive uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. singer. And, and 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 that kind of thing and i'm always really interested on the the take of because they were very big on making sure you and sharon were like you know very you know in the photos and all that kind of stuff oh it was yeah, like, oh, there's, yeah. Two, mm -hmm. there's two beautiful girls in this rock and roll band and it was like oh wow okay like it was a whole different take i suppose fleetwood mac had that angle as well they had yeah. male, and male influence going on um I can only imagine how different it must have been. And it's probably impossible for you to even comment on how different it must be from the female experience traveling in a bus with a bunch of dudes. I can't even well, imagine. I had already been on the road about 13 years before I even got with Toronto. So for me, it was just the same big old family. I guess so, yeah. Like yeah. a bunch of guys. And uh, now I had a girl in the band. Hey, that's a new one. So <laughs> for me, it was really so exciting being in Canada, a new place, new people. New yeah. original material. It was thrilling. And they didn't miss the opportunity, like I say, of focusing on these two, you know, girls to put up front. And like, no, they did not. And it, uh, some of the <laughs> fellas weren't real happy about that. I was going to say, yeah, I can only imagine, like, the, the, the fragility of, 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 you know, the male ego of, like, wait oh, a second. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. But, hey, but you got to know. I've been you dealing with that all my career, though. Of course. Uh, yeah, of course, I, I love my players, and I always love the guys in the band, but, you know, the press goes yeah. right to the singer or to the girls, always. That's just, the way it, that's just the way it was. Hey, good so, problem to have. Good problem to have, I think. Yeah. Well, it sells, right? That's why I always put Shane up front in all the toque promo. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> and he gets all the gifts. He gets right. all the gifts. He is pretty. He's awfully pretty. I'm, I'm I'm cute. I meant that as a compliment, Shane, really. I love the pic Todd put up of us, like from last week, where he's <laughs> literally four feet taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You oh look God. like yeah. Han Solo, and I look like Chewbacca, is what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you look like one of those Ewoks and I look like Chewbacca. Sure. Oh my God. Yeah, you you got to set up those promo pics to make everybody yeah, the same. Exactly. I, need a, I need cinder blocks to stand on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an apple box, they call it in the biz. Yeah. Yes. Well, do, you remember, do you remember that show Definition on, on Canadian TV with, with Jim Perry, I think his name was? Yeah, definition, do, the definition, do. Yeah. yeah. Well, apparently he was he was so tall that he had to stand in a little hall when he hosted yeah. that show. What? They built like a Pit. trench room to walk through. Like, it's so. called Perry's Pit. Yeah. That's hysterical. Wow. Yeah. Well, I know they did a lot of actors. I could see that. Yeah. That, uh, that a lot means... of old uh, old classic actors. They would either have to dig a hole for Alan Ladd, or they would have to. Uh, or excuse me, they would have to put all that on Apple Box, or they would dig a hole for Greg Pack. Greg, like, I know him. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Right. But that song, those who don't know, that, that song from uh, uh, the song, the theme song for Definition went on to be in the Austin Powers movie. That's right. Mm. Mm. So the, only, the only person in the movie theater was me going, like, hey, this is from Definition. All of us like that. Yeah. yeah, all the Canadians. Everybody's like, shut up. Looking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, right. But that's so, so at what point did the, uh, you know, the, the first album comes along? Is it kind of like the first album happens and you're kind of like just fingers crossed that you get to go make a second album? Did the first album have a, a great deal of impact uh, right away for you guys? Immediately. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, um, I don't want to say shocked is the wrong word. Really, I was just blown away by the immediate response. Sure. Because, 
you know, being on the road as long as I was, I mean, I started out doing the Chitlin circuit down around Atlanta and South Carolina for 13 years. So for me, it was like, I'm got a paid gig, I'm getting paid. That's the way it was back then. We just wanted to play and get paid. That was considered a big thing in those Heck days. Yeah. Mm. So even more so now. And have it mm. have like that. <laughs> yes, that's true. And have it make such an impact like that. It's uh I love I, love I the just term. Uh, beside myself. I love the term chitlin circuit. I wanna I'm gonna create I'm gonna... In Canada, what is a chip gig? In, the, in Canada, we play it on the poutine circuit. It was yeah. Like, yeah, I know. I've done that circuit. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know them both. Yeah, I know them yeah, both. Exactly, circuit. yeah. But the South, the South had all that stuff. But I mean, I assume you, I mean, because you've been doing it since you were a kid. So it's like you've played. I started there. out when I was uh, 16 with a little local band and immediately i moved on up to a band in raleigh and then we got our first um house gig in greenville north carolina from there it was rochester new york so by the time i was 19 that's crazy I mean, like, so yeah wrote. so so by the time you're suddenly like making records and all that you're still in your early 20s you're still essentially finding yourself. i was actually 27 when uh I believe I was 27 when Troll came out, and I was 30 when Credit came out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already an old, an old salt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Holly, yeah. so Holly, growing up in a, in what was primarily a male dominated in, dominated industry, what who were your main influences growing up, and and how did that come to be? What made you want to be singer in a rock band? That's a good question, Darren. That's why, I, uh, that's why he's here uh, he asks good questions <laughs> I started out singing you know what what most uh, female vocalists do when they're young I started out you know with acoustic guitar and some Bobby Gentry and things like that but when I heard uh, the uh, Zeppelin one and then right after that somebody brought Cheap Thrills to rehearsal Okay. I, I was dope. I said that that's it. That's the way I'm going. I'm going going for rock. And I loved uh of course Jefferson and Airplane and mm. Janice. Oh that Ridge Mountain. Uh sure. Yeah. Guys like that. Yeah. Big influence. Did you Big rub shoulders influence. with Jefferson Airplane when you were in San Francisco? No, I missed meeting Grace Lick by the blink of an eye when she was in Toronto doing an interview with uh, um, an I'm afternoon talk show with someone. I can't remember the lady's name, but uh, I didn't even know she was in town, but had I known, uh, I think I could have, I probably could have met her for something or gone down to the studio. Mm. But no, I never did, uh, I never did meet or rub elbows with with the airplane that's awesome unfortunately i must say unfortunately yeah. well you yeah. must have been a dream come true for all those bands with that big powerful voice it's all of a sudden like now we can do like led zeppelin and we can do like all this stuff that was like you know guys couldn't normally like some guys obviously like robert plant can sing that stuff but it's such a rarity that you find that guy who or that person that can sing that powerfully and that that great so you come along it must have just been like boom we can do anything now <laughs> Yeah, at that time, it was, that's why I, I always had work. Of course. When yeah. I uh, sat down by myself and, and uh, did my own vocal lessons for myself and learned from reading books and talking to other singers, I just trained and trained and trained and trained until I got to the point where I thought, okay, I've got this pretty much where I want it to be now, I can do pretty much anything. So now I'm sure I'll be working. I'll get work now. And that was the point, was to get that work and be able to tackle anything. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So how, at, by the time the second album comes out and all that kind of, I mean, not to spend like a bunch of time on each album. You, you must I want to hear about this album though. It's, it's one of my favorite albums. It's I a, think. I, that's the funny yeah. thing about Toronto. When I, when I went back and I looked at these records, I was like shocked how many like, how invested I was on each of these albums and how many of the songs are stellar on each record. But, but head on is, is 
is such a standout album as far as like because it maintains the kind of like it's still somewhat commercial obviously but it rocks really hard like it's like this oh yeah it does kind of it, it was a considered a departure from trouble because it was a little a lot more um well i think some of the critics called it a little more intellectual than trouble right. and uh, uh my favorite because I, I actually got to put a couple of songs on there that I had written. So, which ones? I mean, it's real special. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, Blackmail. Uh, I collaborated enough is enough and uh, gone in a flash, but uh, awesome. Blackmail's the one I wrote. God, my memory is so bad, guys. I swear. But, <laughs> That's a long time ago now. I know it's it's you know. Yeah, been... not everything I wrote uh, made the record, so. I was proud of that one because I did get a, a couple on there. No, only oh, nine just... songs on the album, but they're all pretty long. They're all like four minute songs. They no, are, yeah. Five we have big guitar solos and a lot and keyboard solos, man. That that album is full of keyboard solos. Well, you know, it was produced by uh, Terry Brown. That's Rush right. Oh, so Rush, Rush fame. And we fortune. did a lot. We, you know, we we put a lot of so we got some solos in there we got some soloing happening in there and we approach things quite differently with terry yeah terry at the board. arrangements you weren't afraid to like just go take a left turn and go somewhere explore some other avenue in the music at the time, no we weren't afraid of it. well terry that's the good thing about terry is he clearly comes from a background of like you know if it sounds good hell yeah let's do it if, if it's six minutes long who cares let's just make it yeah happen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, still talking about love was a duet. How did that happen? Uh, Brian wrote that song. He just wanted to do something that we could share, like we used to in the old days. That's uh, right. He enjoyed he enjoyed sharing the lead, and so he wrote that for the two of us, and it, it came off quite quite well. We enjoyed doing it on stage, especially. It's it a lot of. And that keyboard solo in that song is one of my favorites of all time. You don't even need Love a keyboard, it. but we can just get you to sing the keyboard solo. <laughs> yeah, really. And that's that's our Scott Cryer. He's a he was a wizard on those keys. For mm. sure. Yeah. What happened sure. to him? Um, Scott's living back in Rochester now. When the band. Uh, when we were interrupted on our solo album tour by Sally Gold's bankruptcy, Scott left and went back. Uh, he had two children at the time and a wife. He went back to Rochester, New York, to his home and just started to rebuild his life from there. He got away from Toronto. He's not in music anymore, Dolly. Is he? He does. So he, has, uh, he has some local things going on and he does piano gigs, you know, oh. just just himself and they're they're beautiful nice. yeah, that's really cool that's awesome you know my italian restaurant that kind of thing yeah, you know? totally, yeah. It, oh wow he enjoys what he does and god bless him we are in touch all the time so that's cool well, that's so awesome we've been yeah. friends for many many years that's, that's so cool yeah. maybe an, a future guest on tuk talk there you go <laughs> drag drag him out of retirement <laughs> I don't think he'd have much to say, though. After really? You, after Corey, after you guys could do dueling he, solos. I would have lots to say. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he, I think he'd probably just sit there because after the bankruptcy and everything, he, just, he turned away from it. So okay. I don't really blame him. That's, yeah, that's, awesome. just, yeah. that's the music biz for you, though, isn't it? Totally. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's a cruel mistress, this rock and roll world. Mm -hmm. Ain't it so? But we choose it anyway. But we do. They, but we just won't. We just won't walk away from it. Which yeah. brings us to the. I mean, so at what point? So by head on, are you guys like headlining your own shows? I mean, I assume. I'm assuming looking for trouble. You're doing a lot of opening slots, or was it sort of? Is there is there any international touring at this point, or are you guys mostly just kind of? Not at that Canada? point. Not to credit. Okay. Credit. Not we uh, we went out with Nugent and Nazareth. Uh, we did a couple things with Journey. Oh. We did uh, a few things with some old friends of mine, Leonard Skinner. Did a few wow. things with them and Robert Palmer. 
uh, there was quite a few. Well, yeah, because your daddy don't know became a, an international hit by that point. Mm. Yeah, we got heavy rotation on MTV with the video, and so we came down here and took it out there for a while. That's right. Great. That's the dream, isn't it? Just try and get like something going enough to get internationally touring and yes and, and, absolutely absolutely yeah. i mean you want to do well in in your home area of course of course yeah so yeah. so being back down here was you know it was nice mm -hmm. it would be to show so at that at which point do the do the members start changing out because it seemed like by credit it's a lot of uh newer faces at a certain point isn't it because barry yeah. comes in yeah right. um before credit, Barry and Gary Lalonde, Barry Connors and Gary Lalonde on bass and drums, they came in to replace Jimmy and Nick. That's right. Um, there were a lot of decisions that went behind that choice, and one of them was a difference in uh, musical direction. We're kind of going in a different way, and we just... It was just a matter of musical background tastes. Were you getting and getting too Barry and Barry? They were more in tune with where we were going. I see. So, so I see. That's that's what we did. And Gary went on to Honeymoon Suite. Is that where Gary Lalonde? Right. That's right. right. Okay. And yeah. Uh, and yeah. That's and, Barry, right. and, Barry, and Barry came from Coney Hatch. Coney Hatch. That's right. Toronto, yeah. right? He he went from us to Coney Hatch. The that's other way around. Was. That's yeah. right. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, that must have been really interesting though. Cause by then, you know, I saw you guys on get it on credit. I think Corey, you saw them on get it on credit. Yeah. Yeah. That was massive. Like I was out outdoor festival type concert. Darby, oh, went yeah. on, Darby went on first, the headpins went on first, but it wasn't Brian and it wasn't ab playing in the band. It was a really weird, like there uh, was, there were legal circumstances there with, uh, with McLeod. To where yeah, he had to get I remember that too. Written out before he was, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, and then you guys so, came. So they out. went out. With but then you guys come out, and it's a massive show, and the lights and and the songs are all really. I mean, that's the cool thing about seeing a band at that, at that point, where it's like that many years of just you know slamming it on the road, so that it's rock solid and really professional. You know, I guess you know adding guys like Barry and and Gary and just like really sort yes. of yes, yeah. It all mm -hmm. up. It was really solid, and it's it's always had a lasting impact on me. I think that that's kind of the coolest thing is you know sort of seeing like you know you guys at your you know sort of like at the the biggest peak of of our, of our peak yeah at commercial success anyway. You know what I mean? Like for that's, sure, for sure. Thing, yeah. Great album. Great, get it on credit is a great album. They're all great album. That's the funny thing is I've been I've been listening to these the, the whole week, just kind of waiting to talk to you, and I'm like, it's not like I don't not like I forgot, but I kind of like. Sometimes you go back to things you grew up on, and you go, well, "This doesn't quite stand up to to the grown up me." But all those songs are really strong and really well written and really well produced. And of course, guess what? Really well sung by Miss Holly. Oh, Ruth. thank you. Thank <laughs> and, and speaking of that album, we actually had uh, Eddie Trunk on a couple of weeks ago, and we were stumping him with songs that were actually right. Canadian songs, and a lot of people. And speaking of that album. Um, somebody was asking on here as well. What was it like after, obviously, the huge success with "What About Love," and of course, Heart's take on that was that something? How did how, was that? I mean, do you guys move forward and play that song live? And that's kind of you know, you still maintain that as your own song. A lot of people, even probably some tuning in right now, don't realize that that was a Toronto song, correct? Yes, that's correct. That is uh, again, uh, I'm. I'll try to make a long story short. I'll do the very best I can. Uh, when the band Toronto split up, we had split up for good at that time, and Scott and I were working on our solo act. Um, we were down in Atlanta recording new songs, and I was pulling out of the driveway to go to the studio, and What About Love came on the radio, and I thought, wait a minute, What About Love was one of our demos for... The girls night out album. Whoa, How that's the first time you heard that on the radio. That's that's first, the first time I knew anything about it? having it or it going anywhere or somebody well, 
sent it somewhere. I didn't know anything. I do not. Wow, know. your 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 jaw must have dropped. Well, now for the first verse, I thought it was us. I thought it was me. Yeah, it's it's almost verbatim, was... isn't it? I mean, your voice is just so similar. <laughs> well, I... The, By the, the time we got to the chorus, I, she had changed. I could tell there were a few changes made. Excuse so me. I thought, well, you know, you know, if anybody's going to cover that tune, it would be Annie Wilson. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. She's. Now she's I was lucky awesome. enough to go to their show in Atlanta a, a while later and talk to and talk to Annie about it. And oh wow, she was just she was just wonderful about the whole thing. She says, oh. I really want to thank you for writing that song. It's just uh, <laughs> it's so well for us, and we really appreciate it. And I said, thank you so much, Anne, but I didn't get any writing credits for that song. I just sang the demo. Right. But right. I don't, actually, I did do a little writing on it. She says, well, I'm telling you, if you hadn't sung it, I wouldn't have done it. Well, that was yeah, all I needed. Yeah, she's... All she, I needed. You can take all the money in the world and keep it, but yeah. that compliment, I, I crush. Mm. Wow. She had, she had no, to sing, I, sing it at, you know, to kind of almost, in a sense, kind of mimic you at least. No, she it, said I didn't have to change yeah. anything. No, yeah. really. No. Yeah, it so, was so close. So that, that's, I talked yeah. to Howard. I talked to Howard Lee's quite quite often. We play in a show here in Vegas sometimes together. He's a great and he, guy. He's and, great and guy. It's, it's funny because just apropos of nothing, one day these guys were talking backstage and they brought up that song. He goes. Yeah, that song was done by a Canadian band called Toronto. And he looks at me and I go, yeah, dude, I know. You know, it's like we sort of, <laughs> he has that bizarre Canadian connection too because he was living in Vancouver yeah. back in the early, Definitely. late 60s, early 70s. Um, but yeah, no, he's, they're very forthcoming about that song just came out of the ether when handed to them to go on mm. to be like, I think, and in, in, I would argue possibly one of their biggest hits ever is, is, yes, is that Yes, it song. was the biggest yeah. ever. I, I yeah. believe I, I may yeah. be wrong on that, but I think so. I yeah, it's 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 kind of a no brainer, and it's kind of a slam dunk. I mean, they they could probably go back and dig through all the Toronto catalog and find a lot of songs to play if they well, wanted to. I, <laughs> yeah. I I uh, I cheer led for that tune to make the record for so yeah. long. Uh, I did. Barry Connors did. Several of us did. Why don't you want to? Why? It's it's beautiful. It's a hit. Right. And the record company said, no, it does not sound like Toronto. Wow. Right. It, it'll never Serious. And yeah. it just crazy. wouldn't do it. So you're telling me, like, I mean, I'm just, this is the craziest thing to imagine, but the record company was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> imagine that. Yeah, imagine that. that. No, I know. Okay, so yeah. just going Go back to, you said you're pulling out of the driveway and you heard the song, then what? Well, I, I, Made a few phone, phone calls. Call lawyer. <laughs> yeah. I, I did. I, I, well, my, my, I called Scott, who was in Atlanta with me, and I said, Scott, I just heard what about love on the radio. And he said, what? I said, yeah. I said, the heart's got it out now. Do you know anything about this? He said, no. I, no one told me anything. Not a word. Mm -hmm. So the Americans were completely left out. And Weird. I guess. When you're out of sight, the rest goes mm -hmm. on. All of a sudden, that guy <laughs> from the record company is now Hart's manager. Yeah. Uh, All of a sudden, a yeah. Uh -huh. Like, so I got, who facilitated I, the song to get from your camp to their camp? Like, was it was it a label decision? Producer? I never found out. I never found out. Well, when that kind of thing's happening, you know, I think when, when, when Hart, when they went on to make that record, there was a real, it's interesting, the parallel between Toronto and Hart in the terms of like, that was a massive sort of shift in sound for Hart too. Like his heart had been this kind yes. of like, you know, and then they kind of, I guess they decided to play ball and, you know, right. Ron Nevis mm -hmm. producing, make a big sort of commercial slick sounding record. Obviously mm -hmm. somebody was out there scouring around looking for songs. They were, and, they were, yeah. And they get hip to things like, like you guys and, and, and different songwriters and stuff floating around. I'm assuming somebody somewhere, somewhere found that song and thought, because the heart Toronto parallels with you and Sharon and then the two sisters and the two Wilson sisters always was this kind of like Toronto was like this Canadian parallel to the American heart band, which had a weird Canadian right. connection too. So, right. so when was, that, when, was that just a coincidence? 
or was that was there some kind of let's do that or it was a coincidence for us uh it just never entered my mind Mm -hmm. that there was such a parallel but of course for the press it was they latched right onto it of course yeah did did that annoy you guys after a while and things like that we were the Canadian, canadian heart uh called Toronto and all, all mm. that other. And so. so was that annoying for you guys? People drawing that no, parallel? No, it didn't bother me. It really didn't bother me at all. I mean, you know, if you're going to go for a comparison, it is rather obvious with a uh, girl guitar player and yeah. girl singer. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to get compared to someone, they're an awesome band. So yeah. It, sure, yeah. it just didn't. And you guys were too. Yeah. Yeah, it's always the yeah. Incredible. We had our own thing going. Exactly. Yeah, we had our own thing going. Totally, absolutely. So, I, I, I guess the next step is to talk about the 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 giant uh, lessons learned by the record industry, which is like one day, <laughs> it's kind of like, well, how does that all go down when the label goes bankrupt? Which sounds like you know everybody's been down the road of, of terrible record business news, but that sounds like one of the worst ones. You know, when you guys are like. Uh, you know, bigger than ever, and then all of a sudden everything kind of goes sideways. Well, the band had broken up then, and I was already on tour with my solo record. Oh, okay. Assault and Flattery, which was, coincidentally enough, produced by Mike Flicker, who also produced um, the Dreamboat Annie album. Oh, all right. right. So, wow. Crazy. We were on the road on tour with our new solo act. Toronto had broken up. And we were in Halifax, huge gig at the time. Yeah. Uh, breakfast. I believe it was Barry Connors and I were at breakfast one morning and got the phone call. The record company went bankrupt. That's the end of the door. Pack it up. Wow. Now, I had been on working visas, okay? Right. I was a Canadian citizen. I had been on working visas. So for me, it was like, whoa, mm. I got to get out. That's heavy. So... <laughs> Talk about the literal rug getting pulled, slam out from under you. Yeah. Uh, I, I was gone in a coincident. I was gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Beginning. So they, they literally just chase you out of the country? Or how does that, I mean, God forbid, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> well, there was no work. There was no oh. work. There was no working visa. Yeah. So no proof, no nothing coming in. I right. I had to go to work. Yeah. And I couldn't work in Canada, so, so yeah, I, I came on, came on back down to Atlanta, mm. put my own yeah. band together, did a little Andy Woods thing, and all I that. I think it's always important for people to hear these sides of the story too, because everybody hears the, uh, you know, we're a band and we're young and we're going to do this, and we're going to take over the world, and then reality hits. Basically, everybody has a story like this. You know, it's very much, rare. Yeah. It's very rare that you have. I read all the rock biographies. The only one that I've ever ever thought was interest was strange was Rod Stewart. Was just kind of like, you know, I'm 19 years old and I play music and then I became famous and I'm Rod Stewart and it just kind of goes on. There's not really any sort of like, you know, drug abuse or or bang. <laughs> right. It, it just kind of was like, and you're like, well, it's just this weird like. Where's all the good stuff? <laughs> 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 yes, but every other story has mine. Everybody here probably has a story of like things are going great, the bottom falls out, you rebuild, you get back out there. It's a it's a wacky business, and it's I always say if 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 we all worked in an office, the amount of hours that we have put in in this in this particular oh. job, we would be presidents of those companies by now. <laughs> you know, but it doesn't Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Just to let you know, that company has just gone bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> It's unfortunate that uh, people don't really understand that, that we, of course, we cherish our talent. Of course we do. And of course we love our shows. We love our fans. But I don't think they really realize just the old, good old-fashioned labor that we put in. Absolutely. You know, yeah. all the, we, we're out there chopping some wood, you know. Yeah. That's, we I work like think, hard. We work hard. I like thinking of it that way. It really is sort of like blue collar rock and roll you get out there and you play music and you know and you just gotta you just gotta do it so now when you do it now how how, what point did you decide to use the the toronto label again like to use the 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 name toronto 
Did it was Barry Connor's idea. Okay. I was uh, I was already down here uh, doing my own thing. I had my own uh, pet rescue service. Oh, okay. I was well. doing that, and I had my own ambulance band uh, here around North Carolina, and we would play from the Carolinas down to Georgia and back up. And I was having a great little time, you know, getting paid, and I love my animal rescue. So uh, I think it took Barry about, I think he says a year, felt more like two years to talk me into going back up there and, and doing the Hollywood in Toronto. It took him a long time to talk me back to it, but, but he finally did. Well, it probably does seem kind of like, are you sure? Like, people want I was to like, you know, Barry, I, I haven't been, you know, the rock got his thing for, for quite a while. I've just been doing the Andy Woods band, which is blues, you know, blues and uh, sort of, you know, an R&B thing, bluesy originals, things like that. So, uh, you know, I hadn't done anything like uh, Daddy or something like that in quite a while. So I said, I said, I don't even know how it's going to go. He said, mm. uh, you'll yeah, be back again in no time. You'll, but there's a there, there's such a market for like when you think about all those bands you were playing with back then, the Headpins and and uh, Trooper and every other band, they all exist and they all work a lot in Canada. You know, what I mean, like or yeah. I mean, there's there's American parallels of all the bands that you know we see around REO Speedwagon or whatever. You know, what I mean, there's bands constantly playing and will play till the end of time in varying degrees of original members and, and not, and that's totally fine. But yeah. having, having you there, obviously, you know, as the focal point of, of, of the thing, and it makes all the sense in the world that, that it should be there and, 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 and revamped. How many days, how many weeks a year, other when there's not COVID-19, how many weeks a year do you normally work? With we with agreed when we first started out that uh, we would only, because of the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm having to come from Carolina. So mm -hmm. uh, they had to, they had to be worth the money, of course, from, to get me up there and yeah. all the other stuff. So we agreed that we would only do gigs that were right for us, where mm -hmm. we could get the proper, yeah. you know, with sure. the flights and things like that. So we would do anywhere from, anywhere from maybe eight to 12 or 14 shows in the spring and summer. It's great. Depending on the year, depending on yeah. how the year went. Yeah. And Canada always has a lot of, well, we play them all the time too, as too, but uh, lots of festivals, lots of Canadian. Outdoor, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, outdoor stuff and whatnot. And you guys always seem to be a part of that, which I think is awesome. Yeah, that's true. Big classic yeah. rock festivals and stuff. Totally, yeah. totally. That music never dies, especially. When you live in Canada, which we don't, but every time we go home, <laughs> I, I get into my rental car from the airport, turn on the radio, and I'm going, you know, it'll be you guys or Harlequin or, you know, it's just like. The I music, know. Just, I go it, through that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the license plates that throw me off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's you true. Know, all these license plates are Canadian. <laughs> yeah. I'm, back, I'm, I'm back home now I'm back where I should be I always do that I always do that driving in the states I'll say to my wife is, is that a Saskatchewan plate and she goes uh, no. she goes she goes no it's Oklahoma I go oh, okay yeah, well, oh, it's well, green and white or whatever yeah. my first <laughs> glance is always it's a Canadian place you know but it never is yeah, totally. yeah. happens to me all the time yeah. Yeah. most of the time in the, in, down in LA pe people from Saskatchewan actually do drive down here for they're just holidays. lost I'm like what Right. And you go by, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're just lost. But you go, you go, you pass them, right? And you wave at them, and they have no idea why they think no they're out, like, are so friendly. Like I ain't pulling over. I ain't pulling over. We get no the way. snowbirds down at Myrtle Beach, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, we get. They fly down to Myrtle Beach. The the Ontario people. I always go up and hey, hey, how y'all doing? And they look at me like, what? Well, <laughs> yeah. Then I have to explain who I am, and they, of course, they understand. They I see. Awesome. I see Alberta plates more than anybody else. I don't know I why. I see a lot here, too. Do you? Oh, I, yeah. I'm and I always wave to... at them. I wonder if I know them. Well, you're in Vegas. So that, is, that would make sense, yeah, though, wouldn't it? You're in Vegas. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just seems like they are the most, I, I guess they get in their wheels and just go. You know, I. Yeah, just pop over the border and gamble. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that can't, that can't so, be the case so much right now, right? I can't see, you know, like we were talking. I mean, this is. Not, yeah. Unless right. they're just stuck down there. 
you yeah. never know. <laughs> so, did you have to cancel a bunch of stuff with the with the coronavirus happening? Did you guys have any any dates on the, on the books before this? A couple, a couple of things were there at that yeah. time. Yeah, we had just started to to get it together for the season. Yeah, when, no, when COVID sense. came on. Yeah. Is there any new music in the future for you guys or for yourself or anything like that? For me, for me, yeah. On my birthday this August 4th, um, I have a writing, had a writing partner in Atlanta, Jane Olderman, who uh, is a, a pretty well-known songwriter in the Atlanta area. She's written songs Ooh. for some of the some of the biggest, uh, Patti LaBelle, many others. Wow. And sorry, when I was sorry, what's in Atlanta, name, uh, set us up. Jane Olderman. Jane Olderman. Jane, Jane Olderman. She heads Red Warrior Records. Oh wow, cool! And she has uh, she's got uh, quite a roster of artists. And uh, I left my demo tapes down there when I had to leave Atlanta suddenly, and they were tucked away somewhere in her archives. And she phoned me up a uh, month or two and said, uh, "You won't believe what I just found, Holly." I said, uh, what? She said, I ran across our old demos. Do you oh, mind if I release them? She said, I've got this project thing called, uh, let, let me make sure I get this right. <laughs> <laughs> magic, the magic is in the demos. It's called Jane Olderman Presents. And oh, there are cool. four artists that she's already released. Uh, each artist is four or five songs of, old writings, old, old demos that she had done back in the 80s. And she called me and she said, will you be the fifth artist? I said, absolutely. They're not doing anything. They're collecting dust down there. Please release them. And so she did, and she promised. She said, I'll promise they'll be ready on your birthday. And they were. Oh, that's awesome. And called the Dose of Magic uh, Hollywoods. And uh, links and everything, my, my Facebook page and the Toronto Band Facebook page and on YouTube, you can find it. So I'm pretty excited about it because, you know, I do love the 80s. And let's face it, a sure. lot of us are 80s fanatics, so I didn't mind them coming out at all. Totally. Uh, I love the set. I think they're great. And I love Jane as a writing partner. I have so much respect for her and what she's done with the project. So, so that's well, my new thing. That's exciting. That's so cool. We'll put a we'll put yes. a link up to that in our show notes. Can we do that, Derek? We can. Technology yeah. to do that. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah, I think we can, can put find, a link in there. Yeah. Awesome. You can find a, a a link on my Anne Elizabeth Woods page, which Corey knows about, or on the Hollywood in Toronto Facebook page. Either one. Yeah, we'll be sure. And to it's also it on YouTube. the demos have Magic Hollywoods. Great. Fantastic. That's exciting. Well, that is fantastic. I'm sure I got the name wrong. Yeah, no, no. We'll, we'll find name. it and we'll put it up there. So, yeah, everybody uh, keep an eye over that. I'm surprised the phone's not ringing and Jay's going, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the demos have magic. That's Demos that's, have magic. That's, yeah. that's a really cool name. Yeah. I can't She's wait to hear really that. She's really doing some amazing things down there with her work. She's quite an artist. She does video work uh all kinds of stuff for, you know, voiceover work, production, just a little bit of everything in the Atlanta area is usually involved somehow. That's awesome. So great yeah, artist. That is awesome. That is great. I got lucky. What can I say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Atlanta's churned out a lot of great music over the years when you think back on it. Oh, for sure. I really enjoyed living there and working there with uh, all the musicians there and writers. I, I got to work with some of the fellows in the uh, Atlanta Rose section and oh, yeah. some old friends of mine, Skinner. And, and of course, uh, I had uh, met Greg Ullman years ago on the road when Ooh. I was a kid and the Ullman brothers were just starting out. Sure so enough. for me, it's kind of another old home, much yeah. like Canada is for me. That's so cool. It's so cool to have like roots in so many different places for yourself. I think that's exciting, you know. It is, but you know, um, as far as having a stable lifestyle, it's, it's, uh, it can be very fragmented, if you know what I mean. A you stable know? lifestyle is really You, you don't settle me. down anywhere. It's kind of no. here, there, and wherever you're called. Yeah, but the, the operative phrase there is settle down, and you don't want to do that. 
you got to think about the people that you grew up with, like, you know, you went to high school with and they stayed there and they married their high school sweetheart and they had kids and their kids are going to the same school that you went to. That sounds kind of bizarrely romantic to me, but it's certainly not the trajectory my life went. I and really I, don't see anybody from those days of, of exactly. my childhood. I, I really don't. And of course, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of us pass on. So, of course, yeah. So, yeah, that, that part of my life is, is uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty solitary here in Durham, especially during the COVID. So I can't yeah. wait until I'm, I'm free here and I can visit my, my home in Canada. Well, never, <laughs> nice. never settle down, Hollywoods. Never settle down. Exactly. I. It's too late. It's too late, <laughs> it's too honey. Late. It's too late, honey. It's too late. Well, it's been All a great. Right. Uh, it's been a great time. We want to uh, thank you for coming on the show today. Uh, we'll get that link up so everybody can check out uh, what you're doing lately, and uh, we look forward to uh, chatting again sometime. And hopefully, once this COVID yeah. lifts, we uh, look forward to seeing you out there. Me I too. Uh, I, I can't wait to actually come in and see uh, two play. Yeah, I, I've been wanting so long, but uh, I appreciate you guys inviting me on. It just means the world to me. I appreciate. It. Oh, I know I put you off really for a while. No, no, no it's uh, been fantastic. But I finally made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so awesome. Nice. We forgot to ask you if you approve of our uh, version of Enough Is Enough. Uh, yeah, I was. I was telling him before. I I was flabbergasted. When Barry played it for me, I just, uh, I, really, I, I was speechless. It's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's a, yeah, you such guys, a great you, song. Well, you do a good job on everything, though. Your, thank your you, street you. heart, uh, uh, your Don't Let Make You Feel Like Dancing with Darby is just <laughs> killer. killer. And what a great idea, too. It's All been fun, Canadian yeah. remix. It's, it's been it really is. It's fun. just a spectacular idea. Uh, I love you guys, and I wish you nothing but the best. Love Thank you, you, Holly. We love you, too. If you get oh. down this way now, y'all give us a call. Y'all come Absolutely. by now. Absolutely. Y'all come by. Y'all come by. Come on by. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, well, uh, again, thanks again for uh, tuning in, everybody. Uh, if you enjoy the show, click below. Uh, you know, donate some stars uh, to these stars and, uh, you know, help support the show and all the, uh, the fun things that we bring in each week. And next week, we are confirmed for our guest next week, or were you going to wait and see? I think we're confirmed. All right, so... Uh, uh, I, I bet you're super excited. Who's on next week? I think we have Russ Dwarf from The Killer Dwarfs on next Never week. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> the guy That's... who wears a Killer Dwarf shirt every week. <laughs> Darren. <laughs> it's Darren's favorite band. He's going to be like this the whole... He's going to be so nervous next week. <laughs> Dwarf. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. All right. So there you go. So, <laughs> right, yeah. So tune in uh, right, next guys. Tuesday. And again, uh, thanks to Hollywoods, thanks to Tuke, and thanks to everybody for tuning in. And uh, we will see you next week. All Bye -bye. right. I love you, Canada, and I love you guys. Take care. Stay safe. Bye -bye. Love you, Miss Holly. Bye -bye.